Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is, this is going to be kind of hard to visualize, and tomorrow when we do the lesson, we're going to talk a lot more about what this actually looks like, but I'm going to try to do my best to explain it here, but I'm going to talk a lot more about algebra today, and tomorrow we'll talk more about what this really looks like. Um, so let's review what we do know. Let's start with what we know. If a square has a side S, what is the area? X, S squared, very good. We're going to use this in today's. What about an equilateral triangle of side S? Okay, that's any triangle with a base and a height. But what about an equilateral triangle of side S? Does anybody remember? This isn't as well known. Okay, it's square root of 3 over 4 S squared. You, this was probably mentioned to you, but you don't have to know this formula in geometry because you can always use half face height. This is just a more direct way, but it only works on equilateral triangles, so it's not emphasized in geometry because that doesn't happen very often. And here, though, with what we're doing, we are going to be dealing with equilateral triangles, and using a face and a height is making it unnecessarily complicated. We're just going to have a side. So it has to do with special right triangles, and it comes from the half base height formula, but square root of 3 over 4 S squared. All right, rectangle, base times height, semicircle, no breath, 1 half pi R squared, a half because it's a semicircle. All right, so in general, the way you're going to find volume, and I'll explain exactly what types of shapes in a minute, but the way you're going to do volume is related to area. So I want you to think, how is area, how do I go from area to volume using calculus? Numbers? You have So I'll give you, I'm going to, so you pass the to think, let me give you two options. It's derivative or integral. Oh, it's integral. Which one? It's integral because you go up a power. It is integral, and here's probably the easiest way to think about it. Area, what could be units for area? <laughs> Meter squared, feet squared, whatever. Something squared. But volume is cubed. So how do you go from squared to cubed? you got to add one to the power. The other way is think about it like we know that integrating is building up. It's adding on a dimension to it. Okay? And so... And we know that area itself is its own little integral. So this is kind of like double integrating, but we're not going to be double integrating because we're going to start already with the area. All right. Um, so looking at this example, who knows how far we'll get today. We won't get past this page, but I don't know how many of these we'll get through. This finds the volume of a solid whose base is bounded by the graph x squared plus y squared equals 25. Okay, what shape is this? It's a circle. It's a circle. Okay, what's the radius? Five. It's five. So I'm going to put a point at each of these, and I'm going to do my best to draw a circle. I think there's actually a circle tool on here, but this yeah. is fine. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's the derivative of area perimeter then? The derivative of the area is not exactly perimeter, but it is a one dimensional. Okay. It'd be more like the length or the side. Okay. Okay. But it's still it's more complicated than that. Yeah. That's a I like that you think of that. Okay. So what this means is Imagine on your paper you have this circle, and then that's the base of this 3D solid. So what do you think are possibilities of what this solid could be? Shapes that you know that have a base of a circle. A cylinder, a cone, and then there's one more that you might not be thinking of, and that is what happens when you take a sphere and you cut it in half? It's like a dome, then the base would be a circle, correct? Well, there's actually other shapes, and these shapes are going to be made by taking slices of known shapes and stacking them next to each other, and um, 
all in all, it makes a circle base. And this is the part that some of you, tomorrow, we're going to have a lot better time. Okay? Um, and so, imagine, before I even get to square, imagine, and it tells us, whoa, okay. <laughs> imagine it says cross-section. So we talked about kind of cross-sections, or we talked about area sections yesterday. Perpendicular to the y-axis. So the y-axis is the vertical axis, so perpendicular would be which direction? X-axis. Yeah. The x-axis, but it really could be anywhere. Spot watch. That's a horrible line. <laughs> it's really hard to draw a horizontal line using this. There we go. It's not too bad. I drew it right here, but you could have gone all the way up. We could have gone all the way down. We could have been in the middle. I want you to think this is going to be what we're doing is I'm taking a knife and I'm cutting my 3D solid. Imagine this. And then that cross section is going to be one of these shapes. Okay? Kind of like that. I mean, this is a chord, but I want you to think that this red line has depth to it. It's coming out at you as well. Okay? And the shape that it's making when it comes out at you is we're gonna we're gonna take all four of these scenarios. <laughs> if you don't under if you can't visualize it, that's okay. That's tomorrow. I'm gonna by the end of tomorrow we're gonna be good at that, okay? And even if you're not here, just watch the video and I think that'll help. Um, but um, so what we need to do is figure out how long this thing is, and I'm gonna call this a slice. That's our slice. And again, if this is on your paper, you're you're like taking your hand and you're slicing down onto this. And so this is the base of the 2D shape that is your slice. If that's not confusing enough. Okay, I know that it kind of is. So let's go down here and let's find out how long the slice is. This is we're gonna have to do this really to proceed anywhere on here. So if we are um, if we're perpendicular to the y-axis, then that means we're with respect to y. We're horizontal, basically. Okay, so thinking back to yesterday when we did horizontal, we did right minus left. And when I say right minus left, I'm talking about the equations, just like how we did yesterday. The right equation minus the left equation. So, on another problem, if it was perpendicular to the x-axis, we would be with respect to x, we'd be vertical, and this would be top minus bottom. So that's how all that could change. So let me come back up here, and what we need to do is to identify, okay, well, what is this right equation? So what I'm saying is, what is the equation of this part of the circle? What is that? Well, I need to... Do I need to solve for x or solve for y? Which one? With this scenario. Okay, we normally solve for y, but this is with respect to y. That means I need to get x by itself. Okay. Um, square root both sides. And what you end up getting is a positive square root of 25 minus y squared. That's the right side. Then what would the left side be? Negative square root of 25 minus y squared. Can, can we just go ahead and take the square root? This does not simplify. You cannot square root the 5 and square root the y. Okay, so let me just say this one more time. Perpendicular to y-axis, with respect to y, horizontal, the slice is right minus left. My equation then was x equals, because it's in terms of y. If I just change this one little y to an x, everything else changes. With a circle, though, the good thing is, we see how we got x by itself. To get y by itself, you would do basically the same thing. And the x's would just become y's and the y's become x's. Okay, so it's not having a circular base is actually pretty nice. 
The other thing that's nice is the bounce, and I'll get to this in a minute. The left and right bounds are the same as the bottom to top bounds, so you don't really have to think too hard about it. All right, so let's go back down here and let's find out how long this slice is going to be. So my right equation was the square root of 25 minus y squared. And when I say equation, what I'm saying is for, well, let's finish. Let's just do this. So minus negative, because the left side was a negative root 25 minus y squared. So what happens when you have minus negative? Plus, Plus I need to Two square root of 25 minus y squared. This means that if I wanted to find out the length of that slice, I would just need to know the y value and I would plug it in. So where I drew the slice was at about 2.5. So if I wanted to find out how long is this right here, the one that I actually drew, I would just plug in 2.5 in for y. Okay. If I wanted to move the slice up, I would plug a bigger, bigger number in. And you can see that the bigger the y is, the, the smaller the result would be because it's 25 minus that. Okay, what's the biggest the slice could be? 10, right? And that would be if y is 0. So look, y is 0 squared. That would be square root of 25, which is 5 times 2 is 10. So it works out. What's the smallest the slice can be? Zero. Yeah, basically zero. Hello. All right. Are you going to answer it? Okay. I'm Oh, okay. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, so here's my slice. Two root 25 minus y squared, okay? So if you're thinking about this red slice jumping out at you and making it square, then the side, then the slice is your side. Do y'all see that? Yeah. And then so with the, yeah. So the height would be also this. Okay, so let's go ahead over here on the square. Now, remember <coughs> how we said the area of a square is s squared, and we said that what we're gonna do is we're gonna integrate area, right? Okay, so the volume, if our cross-section perpendicular to the y-axis is a square, our volume is going to be, and now we need to consider the bounds, but I already kind of gave you a hint on that. It is going to be, um, you know, bottom to top, but even if you thought it was left to right, you'd get it. Okay, and... We don't need to do right minus left here. We already did right minus left, and that's how we found the slice. We do need to square it, though, because that's part of it. So this is kind of how what we're doing today is different than what we did yesterday. Yesterday, though, was just um, area. Today is volume, so there's an added element in there, okay? You want to know the good thing? Good thing is, you're going to get to use your calculator every single time with volume. I do want to say one thing, though, is that um, it could be on the AP test that they don't, they're not asking you to find the answer. They're just asking you to pick out the correct integral. And so what they could do is, like, actually square that two and pull that out there. And then what would happen when you square the square root? It would cancel. This is also going to make you not have to plug in as many parentheses. Wait, where is your 2 going? Oh, you brought it. Yeah, 2 squared is 4, and I brought it out to the outside. This is going to make what you plug in your calculator easier, and you can see here that you actually wouldn't need your calculator to integrate this. It would be pretty easy to do it by hand. Um, but go ahead and type this, either type the original one into your calculator or the new one. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer. go over this again just to just 
So make sure we got it. And for everybody watching the video, if they have a question, I'm going to put a four in front. Could you or should you get a negative? Yep, I messed up there. You could, but it means your boundary switch. Yeah, you messed up if your answer is negative. You should get a positive answer just like for yesterday. So I got 2,000 over 3. Let me pull that up. Okay. okay. So, like, if the, the cord that you're pulling out and you're making it face you, it could be a square or a rectangle and that, like, it would be like a cylinder and you're like pulling it out. Like a drawer. Um, the shape that this makes is not a shape you're used to seeing. Okay. So it's kind of hard to visualize. But the slices are all squares here. So, like, okay. down here, they're tiny, tiny squares. Then here, they're squares that are 10 by 10. And then the squares get tiny again. Okay. So you so may I, be able to start visualizing it, but it's okay if you can't. We're going to focus so on it tomorrow. So is it like a checkerboard with just a ring around it? Whenever it kind of would look like that on the side. It looks like it's closer to the side. If you were to look at this from the side, oh. it would look like from one side, from like looking at it, if I could like put myself down here and look at it on this level, it would look like a square. But if I looked at it from this side, what do you think it would look like then? And this is a tough question. Now, if I'm over no, here. it would look like um, this, like your square. Well, no, like, so the square right? would be really tall in the middle. It would get shorter and shorter down here. This is really, what I'm asking y'all to do, I didn't do this with my other classes, but just because y'all asked. This is really hard to visualize, so don't feel bad if you what can't is, do this. So pyramid? What is the 3D shape? Not a pyramid, because from one side, it's 2D. So what would the pyramid be in 2D? Try trying. So, so that's weird. Shape. It all depends on the shape. That all depends on the, first of all, what your base is, yes. and it depends on this shape. So let's do another one, okay? Let's do a semicircle, okay? So what I mean by that, again, is this right here is the base of the semicircle, and the semicircle is coming out at you. So there's like a curve. It starts here, it goes up, and then it comes back down. And this is hard to visualize. But if you can't visualize it, it's okay. You can still do the problem. Because all you got to do is say, oh, a semicircle, first of all, volume, okay, the bounds are going to be the same no matter, at this point, changing the shape is not going to change the bounds. All I have to do here is write one half pi. I do need to consider, okay, well, what would the radius be? Did you just forget something in here? Oh, no, I forgot. I just took the statement too Oh, yeah, that's fine. All right, so my question is, is the radius of the semicircle, this is the base of the semicircle, is that its radius? Yeah. Like, sorry for the people who are watching this at home. Look at this semicircle I'm making. My thumbs are the base, and my fingers are supposed to be, yeah, like just one thumb would be the radius. Yeah. Oh. So then the right. radius, all right, so we can maybe write this, radius would actually be half of that. Radius would just be this. So it would just be square root of 25 minus y squared. Now this seems like it's really complicated now, and I get it, but next time you're going to know the radius is, I mean, the half of slice, and that, that's going to get easier. And we're going we're gonna to continue this tomorrow, so I don't want anybody to be... Don't get overwhelmed with this. It's okay. I know it's big. We're going to do a lot of it. For some of you, though, this is easy, and I get that, too. And so you'll be challenged, too. Don't worry. All right. So then we need to square this radius. So 25 minus y squared, we need to square just that piece. So how could you clean this up if you wanted to before you entered it into your calculator or um, whatever? The one half pi. One half pi could go to the front. You could test your calculator just the way it is. You don't have to clean it up. But the one half pi could go to the front, and the square and the square root could cancel each other out. So if you did clean up the last one, what I could do is, oops, I could just go in here and go 0.5 pi. And, it, and then the rest of it was the same. 
Why did that give me a death Give me exact. Oh, it's because you, you put point five. Oh, yeah. Half. No, you're exactly right. It's because I did point five instead of a half. Because mine's on auto. All right, 250 pi over 3. Okay, just because I'm curious, does anybody think they know what shape? the 3D shape this will make. The last one was kind of really hard to visualize. This one actually makes a shape we've got even talked about today. A sphere? A semi-sphere. So semi -sphere. It would be the top, or a hemisphere, if you want to think of it like that way. All right, so from whatever angle you look at this one, what would the 2D shape be? If you went to that, it would be a semi-sphere. All right, so that one was kind of different. Would you ever do, uh, what's it called? Or Are you trying to kill me? Uh, no, no, that's um, that's a little complicated. Okay. okay. But like, um, we're gonna do per we're gonna keep perpendicular. All right. Equilateral triangles. Which one do you think this is gonna be like? One or two? One. It's actually kind of like both of them, I guess. It's not really it's, a fair question. Yeah. So negative five, 5 to 5, how would I set this up from here? Root 3 <laughs> over 4, side, now remember the side was 2 square root of 25 minus y squared. And then that whole thing squared, so even the 2 is being squared. So if you wanted to clean this one up, the square root of the 3 over 4 would go out front. 2 squared would be 4. Okay, that's nice. That's just going to cancel those two. And then again, the square and the square root cancel each other out. So this is the nice thing about cleaning it up is that if you're doing multiple problems, you can just kind of easily edit your, uh, your input. And there we go, 500 root 3 over 3. Okay, so weird, yes, but you can kind of start to see it was very similar, just a different formula. I'm not going to do rectangle today. We're going to do that one tomorrow. Definitely, this could be more complicated. Or I don't mean more complicated, but it could be different. I could give you a base that's not a circle. I can give you a base that's a triangle, or if you turn over to the next page, we can see something that looks like this. And then we're going to start talking about revolving around an x-axis and a y-axis. So I'm going to show you some applets, though, that's going to make help, it's going to help you actually um, visualize this. So if you're not, if you're like, I don't understand if everybody else sees this in their mind, I can't see that. I'm going to show you something that I can't draw, okay? Okay. 